It's difficult to imagine living in a world the likes of sanctuary or in our own. The only angels and demons come in the form of human beings. In this biblical universe, supernatural spirits are not a question, but a reality. Since the beginning of time, their two sides have warred against one another. One, the high heavens, the other, the burning hells. In this contest of angel versus demon, a faction composed of the two formed a union and rebelled. In their rebellion, they created a refuge from the war known as Sanctuary. As time passed on, their offspring, the Nephilim, whose power they feared and diminished, became humans. Hello there, and welcome to a Diablo Lore video, where we explore what it's like to live in the world of Sanctuary for the ordinary human. The Eternal War was a prolonged conflict between the forces of heaven and hell. After endless years of fighting, a group of renegade angels and demons sought to escape the war and came together to create a sanctuary where they could live in peace. Sanctuary became the birthplace of the Nephilim, the progeny of these angels and demons. Two key figures led this group, Lilith, the daughter of Mephisto, and Anaris, an archangel of the high heavens. The Nephilim were incredibly powerful beings possessing strength far exceeding that of their angelic and demonic parents. However, Inaris, fearing the potential threat of these offsprings, altered the world stone, a powerful crystal at the heart of sanctuary, to suppress the Nephilim's powers. This led to their descent being born weaker with each generation, eventually resulting in the birth of humans as we know them. During a critical period in the history of the Nephilim, known as the Sin War. The primevals of Hell, Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal established a religious organization called the Triune in an attempt to enslave humanity. Anaris, seeking to counteract their influence, formed the Cathedral of Light as a rival faith. The Triune was structured around three subcults, each dedicated to one of the primevals disguised as benevolent spirits, Dialon, Bala, and Mephis. These cults lured unsuspecting individuals with teachings of determination, creation, and love, respectively, gradually corrupting them with the lure teachings of the primevals. The Sin War reached a climax when the Nephilim powers awakened within a number of humans due to the machinations of Lilith. This event led the formation to a group called the Edrim, led by Odysseum ul Daun. The Edrim waged a war against both the Triune and Cathedral of Light, which eventually resulted in the downfall of the Triune. At the defeat of Malthor, the Angel of Death, the Triune saw an opportunity to regain its power. It attempted to fill the power vacuum left in Sanctuary with the goal of bringing back the Prime Evils. This marked the resurgence of the Triune's influence and led to new engagements within Sanctuary. The Sin War, a covert contest that shaped the destiny of Sanctuary and its inhabitants, was a time of great turmoil and uncertainty. This was a period where humans were unknowingly pawns in a grand cosmic game played by the primevals of the Burning Hells and the Ritigade Angel Inaris. The Heaven-Hell conflict, usually beyond human perception, had infiltrated the human realm, but not through open warfare. Instead, the battlefield was the hearts and minds of humanity, and the weapons were faith, manipulation, and deception. At the forefront of this unseen battling were the Triune and the Cathedral of Light, two major religious organizations with hidden agendas. The Triune, under the guise of promoting the virtues of determination, creation, and love, was in the reality of a puppet of the primevals. The Cathedral of Light, while seemingly a force of benevolence and unity, was the tool of Anaris, a renegade angel with his own intentions for humanity. For the ordinary inhabitants of Sanctuary, this was a time of great spiritual awakening and societal upheaval. Kings and queens, swayed by the charisma of the Triune or the righteousness of the Cathedral, used their influence to promote these religions, leading to polarized society. Peasants, 
merchants and nobles alike were drawn into the ideology of struggle, often without a true understanding of the forces at play. The everyday life of these people was marked by this religious fervor. Families might be divided, with some members swearing allegiance to the triune, while others felt a calling towards the Cathedral of Light. Friendships and alliances were tested, and suspicions often reigned, as any deviating from the teachings of the chosen faith could lead to accusations of heresy or treachery. Despite this inherent danger of this period, it was also a time of profound personal transformation for many. Some found purpose and courage they never knew they had, while others discovered a capacity for deception and betrayal. The Sin War brought about the best and worst in humanity, shaping the course of individuals and nations alike. Poverty and suffering, unfortunately, were all too common during the Sin War, as resources were funneled towards the competing face. Common folk often found themselves neglected. Droughts, famines, and other calamities went unaddressed, leading to widespread discontent and suffering. Yet, this was also a time of heroes and awakening. The Nephilim heritage within some humans was rekindled, leading to the rise of Edrim, a force that would challenge the hidden puppeteers of the Sin War. Led by Odyssean or Daun, they represented a beacon of hope for many, a sign that humanity could rise above its manipulated destiny. In the world of Sanctuary, the common man lives in a perpetual state of turmoil, constantly under the looming threat of demonic forces. Their daily lives are shaped by the need to survive in an unforgiving and dangerous environment. Amidst this unrelenting struggle, they develop unique ways to cope and find solace. The ordinary people of Sanctuary develop routines that prioritize safety and survival. They may rise with the sun to fortify their homes or gather in communal shelters during particularly vulnerable times. Daily tasks such as farming, trade, and craftsmanship are punctuated with frequent pauses for vigilance and preparedness. To combat the ever-present threat, the common man clings to superstitions and rituals passed down through generations. They may carry amulets or talismans, believed to ward off demonic influences or perform rituals to appease unseen forces. These practices provide a sense of control and protection in an unpredictable world. The common man may also weave intricate folk tales and legends to explain the origins of the demonic threat to inspire hope. These stories recount the heroism of ancient warriors, the cunning of tricksters, spirits, and the power of hidden relics. They may rely on their neighbors and fellow villagers, forming a tight-knit community that provides mutual support and protection. Sharing resources, knowledge, and skill becomes vital for survival fostering a spirit of cooperation and unity. As spirit is not enough to combat demonic forces that lurk beyond the homestead, communities devise strategies to quickly identify signs of danger by adjusting their routines to minimize risks. Yet, even amidst the ceaseless vigilance, they cherish fleeting moments of normalcy, gathering for communal feasts, celebrating festivals, and indulging in activities that offer a temporary distraction from the omnipresent threat. These moments serve as brief respites, a testament to the human ability to find joy in adversity. Of course, as the Nephilim rises, so too does the status of man. While perhaps not all human beings can be considered healers, warriors, rogues, or mages, some are quite knowledgeable, able to aid heroes along their quests, even providing them the necessary weaponry or housing they need to continue forth against the forces of Diablo. In many cases, ignorance is a sweet relief as the true story of the eternal conflict is not known by many. In fact, the ordinary peasant may not know little beyond the limits of their village. While the ordinary people of Sanctuary live in constant fear, they refuse to succumb to despair. They embody the indomitable spirit of humanity finding strength in their routines, traditions, and connections with one another. Their ability to adapt, support, and hold on to hope 
in the face of unyielding turmoil is a testament to their enduring resilience. Through their stories and experience, we gain a deeper appreciation for the struggles, sacrifice, and unwavering determination of the regular man in the world of sanctuary. Thank you for watching. If you watched this far, please consider subscribing to the channel or leaving a comment. And I'll see you next time.